Howdy folks, this is Bell Geode, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator, and this is a test, otherwise known as one of my chill videos. So yeah, here we are, finally, in not only Sim Update 10, which was long awaited, it actually took them several months to go through the beta testing for Sim Update 10, but not only do we have that, but now we also have World Update 11, which brings to us improvements to the nation of Canada. Now, just a quick disclaimer, we are not in Canada. We're close, but no cigar. We are actually in Michigan, or more to the point, we're on Lake Michigan at uh, Fox Islands. Now, the Fox Islands I have featured before in X-Plane, in the X-Plane 11 series, and I want to say it is the same add-on developer or perhaps the same assets being used for this custom Fox Islands that I'm currently running. And of course, the link to everything will be in the video description below, so you can always check it out. But I would highly recommend that you get it because it just looks so cool and it makes the islands seem real. So what is this bird that we're looking at here? Well... This is the tiger moth, and this one is a classic in all sense of the words. Think about it. This thing was built in the 30s. It had its first flight in 1931. Over 8,000, almost 9,000 of them were built, and it was a beloved training aircraft due to its docile nature. And this particular version is by Ant's Aircraft, and it has been a staple in the flight simming community ever since like the FSX days. I want to say maybe FS9 as well, but I think Ant actually first put it out in FSX. Suffice to say, this is now the third time that I have gotten this aircraft. I got it for FSX, got it for P3D, and now got it for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It is every bit as beautiful as I remember, even more so now that we've got, you know, proper PBR rendering and all that good jazz that you come to expect with Microsoft Flight Simulator. But for me, this is a first because back then I didn't have VR. Now I do. So I can actually get to fly this thing in all its open cockpit glory in VR, and that I think is what I'm most looking forward to. All right, so I'm not going to go through a lot of the uh, technical details regarding the aircraft or even, you know, like uh, running a tutorial, how to start it, and so on and so forth. We're just going to try and keep it as simple as possible here because, number one, I want to show off the plane. Number two, I want to show off the scenery. And number three, I want to show off the better performance that I'm getting in Sim Update 10, World Update 11. And it has improved. The VR experience has been a little bit smoother. Now, unfortunately, as I'm sure you've probably already seen the pop-ups at the bottom, since I am recording using Oculus Mirror, Oculus Mirror itself tends to act like it is stuttery if it is not the active window. There is no way to make Oculus Mirror the active window while I'm recording because I need to have Microsoft Flight Simulator as the active window in order for my control inputs to register. Something's got to give here. So Asobo, Microsoft, seriously, you really need to look into making it so that what you're seeing right now on YouTube is exactly what the VR user sees while in VR. We don't want that two-eye thing. I've beat that to death over several videos, but it, it still remains something that you need to look at because it will work wonders, especially for those of us in VR who do like to record our stuff and show it to the general public. We're showing off your sim, Asobo, so can you at least work with us so that we can show it in the best possible light? All right, rant over. So, first things first. In these chill videos, I usually check out the external cameras first. So, uh, since we are currently in drone cam, I'm just going to set this up in like a default position here. So that way we can do our little cinematic round and round once we take off. And we're going to check out some of the other cameras. So, starting with this camera. Okay, Ant, um, you may want to do something with this camera. It is clearly not 
far enough back. I'm literally inside the rudder. And while I can see that they did go the extra mile on this, uh, it's a little disconcerting to have uh, spar and fabric going through my face. So, yeah, don't know if you can adjust that, please. Then we got our standard side view. I remember this view. This one goes way back to FSX. So just so you're aware, this aircraft does not like doing rolls at all. Aileron rolls, barrel rolls, no, none of it. You can, but if I were you, I would try it at a very high altitude and not at like 2,000 feet, 1,000 feet airshow altitude. Trust me on that one. And then, of course, here's the other side. I'm just going to do my little controls wipe out here. The only thing I don't like about this camera is the fact that it's pointing up. I think it needs to be moved so that it's like right here. So we can actually see the airplane and not blue sky above. As much as I love blue sky. And then there's this one. This one is actually a pretty cool camera. I like this one. You can see the little pilots all period correct in their gear. Um, I don't believe you can use the Asobo pilots in this one, but... Even though I would prefer the Asobo Pilots, I'm going to give it a pass simply because these guys are wearing period gear. So I'm okay with that. And then we have this. This is probably one of the most useful cameras because, as you know, in a tail dragger, your nose is pointed up. So you can't really see ahead of you. So you either got to do S turns or just jump to this camera and now you can see where you're taxiing. Then, of course, there's the little cinematic above or in front of the prop. That's always cool. It would be even cooler if we were doing a loop-the-loop, -loop, which this thing can do. It does have good elevator authority. It's just ailerons where it's like, yeah, no, I'll pass. And finally, the Belgiode landing cam. Love the Belgiode landing cam. Enough said. Okay, well, maybe that's not final. We've got... This one, where we can see our little dude. And we've got this one, where we can also see our little dude. And then back to here. Okay, I'm going to put it to this camera. And we are going to hop into the aircraft. All right, so not much to tell about this thing. Um, it is classic. So as you would expect, there's not a lot of mod cons. However, I'm going to put an asterisk by that because there is something that can help us out. So to start, this thing is going to be really interesting. This is your throttle. This is your mixture. And unlike in other planes where your mixture is usually uh, full lean, this one starts with a mixture full rich. Not only that, but the throttle, if I pull the throttle up here, you'll see it has a little latch on the side that actually holds the mixture in place. So that is something to keep in mind as well. This is your trim. And of course, you can remove or hide the stick. Your altimeter, you can change the altimeter type. So whether you want to see it in uh, feet or whatnot, you can change that around. Same thing with the airspeed indicator. Your magnetos, believe it or not, you see a little jumping hand there? Yeah, that's where your magnetos are. There's a reason for that. So with this aircraft, stuff like priming it and uh, magnetos and all that stuff are actually on the engine in front. Like there is a little compartment that will open up off to the side that will allow you to set the priming and all of that stuff before you even get into the cockpit. And since this thing doesn't have like a natural um, starter, as it were, you have to pull the prop to start it. Of course, there's all kinds of cheats and so on that we can use. Uh, pretty much what I've found to start this thing, the easiest way to do it, is simply to just turn the magnetos on with my verbal knob that I have set for that. And it'll go through left, right, both, and then start. So that's like the easiest way to do it. All right, we do have a little knob down there for the fuel valve. It should be open. I believe it is. We'll find out when we try to start it. But here's the thing that I really want to show you, and I actually have to move around in my seat. You see that down there? Little compartment right there. What happens if I clicky? There's one thing, and there's another thing. So what just happened here? We have a little teeny tiny GPS, about the size of an iPhone, that we can now use to plot our course. 
Uh, I want to say it should be this one, right? No, it is this one, map. Okay, so there you go. That shows you exactly where we are. And that's for those of you who don't want to use dead reckoning and would rather have a little bit of modern convenience in your aircraft. We're going to leave it up so that way I know where I'm going, even though I have a good idea about these islands, but I actually want to visit another neighboring island. So, And then we have all the options on this iPad here. So smart, smart is pretty cool. Basically what that means is uh, the sim will decide when to show your pilot. So it's not going to show your pilot if you're sitting in the seat. It will show the pilot if you are outside. If you are in a view, like if there's a cockpit view, which I believe there is a cockpit view that's set like this, it will not show the pilot because it's assumed that you're physically looking out the aircraft. We're in VR, so we don't need to use that cockpit view. We can physically look out the aircraft. Same thing for the passenger or the co-pilot. GPS, pilot doors, co-pilot doors, da-da-da-da-da. I'm sure you can read all of that stuff. Engine realism is set to easy. With it set to easy, we don't have to worry about the engine. We don't have to worry about, you know, like burning everything up or whatever. If you set it to hard, you will need to prime your engine, which remember, you got to do that from the outside of the plane. You will need to watch for fouled spark plugs, all of that good jazz there. All right, let's move on. Exterior preferences, so pedo type, Australian or English. Australian, English, we'll leave it on English. Luggage door closed, tail gear is currently set to skid. We can change that to a tail wheel. Uh, windy airspeed gauge, oil tank straps, whole nine yard. You can see all of the stuff that it comes here with. Ant really packed it in. A lot of good stuff. Engine realism, easy. Click to quick start. If you really don't want to press like control E or whatever, you can just click that and it'll do that. Wheel chocks currently off. Magnetos are linked. Uh, let's see. Yeah, pretty much everything that you would need. Spark plug condition. It tells you what that is. Fuel and oil levels. It tells you what that is. Engine prime. It tells you what that is as well. Since we're on easy mode, we don't need to worry about that. Autopilot. Pretty self-explanatory. You want to use autopilot? This is where you go. And radios. It'll tell you what channel you're on. Since I don't think this thing normally has radios, but we kind of want to have all of those modern conveniences in there. And then back to cockpit preferences. So we will put it on... I guess we'll put it on this for now for engine start. Now to start this puppy up, it is pretty simple. I just uh, hit the battery switch, which seems to activate the Garmin. It doesn't really do much of anything else in here, but that is okay. But to start it, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the magneto since the engine is on easy mode. So, little buddy up front is ready. Here we go. Clear. Three, Mike India, two traffic November 70, Alpha Golf Bravo, taking off runway 18, departure to the north. 18. Wait, what? I don't think we're taking off to the south to go north. I think we're taking off from the south, which is over there. Oh, Kara, you're so crazy. All right, so if you are on hard engine mode, you want to make sure that you're idling somewhere between 800 and 1,000. There is also a thing here. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I don't see it. Okay, what I'm trying to locate here is basically a cheat that's built into the aircraft to account for its roll resistance. There it is. Rolling resistance norm, rolling resistance high. Now, what is that? That is pretty important. So as you know, in Microsoft Flight Simulator with GA, sometimes when you're ground handling, it feels like your airplane almost has no weight to it. It doesn't feel like gravity is doing its job and holding you to the taxiway, making it more difficult for you to taxi. That's where this comes in. Rolling resistance, when you set it to high, it basically cheats its way by adding a little bit of brake pressure 
to simulate the fact that you've got a pretty heavy aircraft, which I'm going to use that term relatively, on the taxiway. But with that having been done, let's go ahead and get our parking brakes off. We're going to throttle up. They say you're supposed to taxi at about 1200 RPM, especially when you've got the rolling resistance set to high. This is a tail dragger, so you know what that means. I'm sure I don't need to explain that part. And we're going to have to do a little bit of back taxi here. So if you've never been to Fox Islands, there is a horse farm over there which is pretty cool. So you can check that out on your way out. And this is actually pretty normal having a private jet come to this island because these islands are private and they are kind of like rich people playground. So yeah, that is a normal sight here. There is also a lighthouse just to the south. We'll fly around the island once we take off so you can see it. Uh, looks like the wind is blowing in the opposite direction, so takeoff is going to be fun because I am totally taking off in the wrong way. Let me open up our little door here so I can actually see out. Okay, I got red lights up ahead. That is kind of what I'm looking for here. I'm going to pull the throttle back a bit. And remember, tail dragger, you know what that means. Go easy on the brakes. Do not, I repeat, do not ride your dang brakes. You will regret it. Although if you're watching this channel, you're probably used to seeing my shenanigans anyway. All right, there is the lake. Turning, of course, gets interesting because you got to add a little extra power. Remember the rolling resistance? So it is now fighting against me turning. So we're just going to play the throttle tango here. And we're also going to give love taps on the brakes just to make sure she doesn't go out of control and head into the forest. As far as I am aware, there is no tail wheel lock on this, considering that the real bird actually had skids and wheels are kind of like a modern conversion, so to speak. You can expect to take off uh, shortly after about 40 or so knots. I mean, it's a biplane. It was meant for lift. Okay, so I think we're just about ready. And I should probably close my door. Uh, the real question is, how do I do that? I guess we can just click on where it says door, right? Come on. There you go. Okay. Door is locked. Everything is set. Do a quick control wipe out here. All right. Things are looking good. It is time. So, brakes down part way. Throttles up. We're looking for about 2200 RPM. Throttle is past the 50% mark and at the 75, brakes off. And here we go. I'm going to switch to the outside view.
almost effortless. Now I can't speak to the sounds. We'll wait for Kara to do her thing. I'm going to trim us up a little here. Okay, let's fix that. Woo! That's a big jump. I should have set my altimeter before we took off. Okay, but yeah, this thing is awesome. Now, I can't speak to the sounds. I don't know how accurate the sounds are, but they seem pretty decent to me, so I'm not going to complain too much. There is one of our stops. That is the North Island, so we're going to be checking that out momentarily. There should be a small grass strip, if I remember correctly, with a bunch of tents set up nearby. I'm not sure we can try and land this thing here, but we might be able to get away with a touch and go. But in the meantime, I do want to check out that lighthouse on the southern part of the island. So we're just going to cut across here. And you can see where we took off from coming into view. Looks really sweet. There's not much to this island, but I do love the fact that it's got the uh, custom uh, scenery nonetheless because it looks more familiar to me. It definitely reminds me of the X-Plane version. And I happen to know that the gentleman who made the X-Plane version, so I can only assume he either allowed for the assets to be used or maybe somebody else did the same exact thing. But this, this almost looks like his assets. So I would not be too surprised if someone got permission to convert it or maybe he did it himself and just isn't telling us since he is one of the X-Plane dedicated. Which means he has no plans on bringing anything over to Microsoft Flight Simulator, at least not publicly. So, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, I'm liking it. I don't see the lighthouse, though. The lighthouse is supposed to be down there, so let's see if we can move over that way and we'll try to find it. I'm going to pull our power back a little bit here. So we're right about 1900 RPM, which should be good for a cruise. We're cruising at about 82 knots. And I'm going to trim the nose down a little here. Looks like we are at 1700 feet, so we'll keep it there between 1700 and 2000. Should be nice. We won't mess with the autopilot just yet until we're heading to the other islands. But I just want to see if they did in fact model the lighthouse because it should be at the very southern tip of this island here. I think I see it. Yep, I do believe I see it. Okay, well, we could do a uh, top gun here and fly past the lighthouse. So we're going to do just that. We are now descending. I love this little slip indicator here. That's pretty cool. I still can't make a coordinated turn to save my life, but I do love the fact that we've got a little moving slip indicator here. And it is a little breezy. VNE, or never exceed speed, is 139 knots on this puppy. There it is. There is our lighthouse, and look at the shore. Look how rocky that is. That is sweet. I love stuff like this. Because I have never been here in real life, this is a really good way for me to see what it actually looks like. I love it. Absolutely love it. Alright, so we're going to hop to the North Island now, and we're going to check out that um, campsite with a little grass strip. We trim us back up here. So now remember with this aircraft, as far as your mixture goes, it is locked in place if your throttle is closed. 
if you want to lean your mixture, you can only do it if you've got a serious amount of throttle. So right now we're set at about 75% throttle. If we were over 2,000 feet, I could lean the mixture. And as you've no doubt noticed, this is a fixed wooden prop, so naturally there's not going to be any prop pitch control. Oh look, there is someone down there. I wonder if that's anyone I know. With any luck, it's probably either Sparky Spin or the VR Pilot. One of the two of them. The only thing that's a little disappointing about this scenery, and it's really minor points, but it's something that sticks out to me. There are no horses. The X-Plane version has horses. You could see them romping in the little stables or fields or whatever you call those. They are not there. They are absolutely not there. Not quite sure what's up with that. All right, I'm gonna see if I can force our GPS to change the magenta line. Still have no idea who that is over there or whether or not they're planning on taking off, but uh, I do see lights, so I would assume that is the case. Nobody knows I'm here this morning. All right, let's line ourselves up on the GPS. So right about here should be good. And we'll keep heading this way until it's time to break right. Now I'm gonna try out the autopilot. So let me gain a little bit more altitude here. We'll set ourselves up at about 1500. I don't wanna get much lower than uh, 55 knots. So we're gonna give it some more power. We're not in danger of blowing up the engine, so we should be good. We're going to climb to 1500. Right about there, we'll turn on the autopilot. Okay, altitude hold should now be on, I think. And if I set it to nav hold, what is it going to do? Looks like it's veering us to the left. Let's see if it's actually correcting or if it's going to set us back to the airport. No, it looks like it's actually correcting. Okay, awesome. Awesome. All right, let's pull the power back. We're going to go to the outside drone camera and do our usual cinematic goodness.
Okay, I am going to take it off of nav hole because we don't seem to be tracking the way I would like. We should have turned right, so that way we can head to the North Island. So we're going to do that manually here. We are, however, still on altitude hold, so I'm fine with that. And it looks like whoever was at that airport has just taken off, so we're going to see if they're going to do any formation flying with us, and that'll be a dead giveaway that it is someone I know. And there's really only a few people that it could possibly be, especially if they're flying something as fast as a fighter jet, which is what this looks to be. Yeah, there's really only two culprits. All right, but let's go ahead and take it off of autopilot altogether. And we are going to see what is on the North Island. We're going to do it low and slow. I'm just checking to see if my uh, tail is still here. Okay, it's around there somewhere. All right, so there is the grass strip. There's literally nothing else on this island except for that grass strip. So let's go ahead and come down. Incidentally, when you're descending, whether it's a tactical descent or otherwise, they recommend do not put your RPM less than 1,000. So it's idled right now, but you can see I've got it at around 1,100 and we're falling fairly rapidly. I just want to get a good look here at what's going on before we decide if we're going to try and do a touch and go. Ah, look at that. Yeah, they remembered the campsite. So I wonder if this works with Parallel 42's little campsite mod, which I've been meaning to try and show on the channel. I did take a look at it. Um, Helisimmer.com actually showcased it on their site. And I believe Avangel also took a look at it, but I haven't taken a look at Avangel's uh, first look on it. But yeah, I think that's a really cool idea that they came up with to allow you to take your aircraft to the wilderness and go camping. Not so sure how I feel about those rocks, however. We're going to try a touch and go here. This could end really badly, folks. Really badly. Okay, another unique thing about this thing, it doesn't have flaps, it has slots. Right now the slots are locked, but if you put your flaps down, so there's a switch I have for that, flaps down, what that'll do is the slots will automatically move when we get close to stall speed, and it'll help us generate lift so that we don't fall out of the sky. And I appear to be too low to see the runway so we're gonna quickly turn around here thankfully this thing has a lot of rudder authority so it can help us with that I do believe that is our runway we're just at the edge of the flight envelope here you can see we're just below 60 this is going to be fun maybe I should do this from the outside view huh Minneapolis Center, November 70, Alpha Golf Bravo, is typed one miles northeast of Six Yankee Tree, 900 feet. Request flight following. 
November 70, Alpha Golf Bravo, Minneapolis Center. Squawk 7312. Squawk 7312, Alpha Golf Bravo. Alpha Golf Bravo radar contact, one mile northeast of 6 Yankee Tree, 1000 feet. Altimeter Tree, 0 decimal 27. Roger, Alpha Golf Bravo. Okay, so that went a little bit better than I expected. And we are headed in the right direction, so there is an airport up ahead that we can land at. We can actually land at. We don't have to do a touch and go. Not 100% certain if this airport is on American soil or Canadian soil. I want to say it might be Canadian. But I'll have a little pop-up below to um, tell you if that is in fact the case. But if you look way off in the distance, and I mean way off in the distance, you can start to see the edges of Canada. So there we go. This is our uh, honorary Canada debut, I guess. I have no idea what to call it. It's a cameo appearance of Canada is what it is. All right, we are still climbing here, and I do not want to be climbing. So let me trim us down just a touch. We are back at 1500, however, so let me put the autopilot back on. And we can actually check that. Okay. Wing leveler is on, altitude hold is on at 1,600 feet. So there we go. And remember, since all of this stuff is optional, you don't have to have it. If you want to, you could just put everything to hard mode, hide the iPad and the GPS, and just go flying. And especially if you're like in the backwoods of Canada and whatnot, I think this would make for a really interesting aircraft to try and take to those remote areas. As for me, well, let's just say I like to know where I'm going and what I'm doing. So sometimes, especially when I'm recording, I like to make sure that everything is playing nice with each other. All right, once again, we'll go back out and do that cinematic thing. And when we come back, we should be getting ready to go over this island, the name of which will be popping up on your screen below because as always I can't remember anything when I actually press record I just start flying
Okay, we appear to be drifting way off course, so I am going to swing us out this way. Probably should have put my heading hold on. I still can. So we're going to point ourselves right here. And we will hit heading hold. There we go. Heading is now locked at uh, 18 degrees. All right, and that should be cool. Now, the real question, where in the heck are we? Uh, let's open up the ATC window, and we're gonna go nearest airport list. Okay, uh, Beaver is directly up ahead, I believe, and since it starts with a K, I can now assume that we are still in the United States. Canada would start with a C. North Fox Island is where we just left. I want to say Beaver is where we are headed. But again, I'm not 100% certain. KSJX, okay, here's what we can do. I do have it in my flight plan, so provided I know how to get the flight plan up, Yep, beaver. Okay, so that is where we need to go. That is exactly where we need to go. All right, let's put it back to map. Now, originally with this flight plan, I had us going to beaver and then turning back around and heading back to Fox Island. However, since this video is starting to get a little bit longer, and even though you all know that I am known for my one hour plus videos, I don't really want to fly for that long, especially in something as low and slow as this. So I'm thinking once we land, we should be good enough, and you should have had a really good view of this bird and this scenery to where you can probably make up your mind as to whether or not it is something you might be interested in and honestly like I said because ant is such a household name in the flight sim community I would definitely recommend getting this bird especially if you just want something for what I like to call Sunday afternoon flying which is ironic because I'm recording this on a Saturday morning October 1st 2022 but yeah if you like your uh, Sunday afternoon flying this is the bird for you it kind of reminds me of the Carinado version of the Waco, except I think Ant has done a better job than Carinado. And I don't say that lightly, because I like Carinado's uh, tail draggers. All right, I think that's our airport. Now, one of these days, I may actually learn how to use this compass. It won't be today, though. All right. Kara, do me a favor if you could please contact Beaver and tell them we are coming in to land. Minneapolis Center, JMB Aviation, November 48721, 4, 4,800 feet. JMB Aviation, November 48721, 4, Minneapolis Center, altimeter 30, decimal 27, continue and land. All right, let's get the weather first. Okay, let's see what runway do we want to land on. They said winds calm, so we could probably go either left or right. Clear of which runway? Which runway did you land on, man?
All right, let's um, let's fly a little bit closer, and then we'll figure out which runway we want to come in on. So we're going to take the autopilot off. There we go. Everything is now off. And what is our altitude? Our altitude is still 1,600 feet. I'm okay with this. That'll give me a good bird's eye view. Now, as you can see, this island is default. So it is not nearly as good looking as the Fox Islands that we just left. So I think this is a pretty good comparison as to the add-on that I'm using that uh, makes Fox Islands look so much better. All right, looks like the main runway is east to west, so we just need to figure out which way we want to land. And to do that, we're going to look for a windsock. So far, I do have to say I do like the performance improvements in VR with Sim Update 10. There's still areas of improvement. It is not perfect, and your mileage may vary. I do get a lot of questions, especially online in the Facebook groups, about you know what my settings are and why is it that it seems to work smoother for me than others. Remember, folks, I am not Team Green. I have nothing against Team Green, but I am still team red and i'm running an amd radeon 7 which granted now is a relatively older graphics card but it's still got 16 gigs of vram on board and its speed is not that bad it's comparable to i guess one of the slower nvidia cards not like your 3090s or anything like that but it's definitely doing the trick and i have noticed that on a whole I seem to have less issues in sims such as Microsoft Flight Simulator than my Team Green brethren. I don't know what is the story behind that, but you know what? I am of the camp where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Alright, now, Windsock, where are you? I need to see you, I need to find you, so that I can figure out which way we're going to land. And then I can have Kara tell them that we're coming in. Well, if nothing else, we found the parking area. It's right there. I'm hoping we're not too high up to see the wind socks. They have a notorious habit of only generating if you're low enough to see them. Something I wish Microsoft and Asobo would change. All right, let's pull the power back here a bit. Let's go to about 1,800 RPM thereabouts. Hello, Windsock. Where are you? Don't tell me they don't have any Windsock here. And there was just a Cessna that landed here, too. So where the hell is that guy? Oh, I see him. I see him. He's on a ramp. Clearly, he is AI. Awful lot of grass strips here. Or at least I think those are supposed to be grass strips. You mean to tell me there is no windsock? Oh, wait, no, no, I stand corrected. There is a windsock. And which way is it blowing? We'll find out when it gets past the trailing edge. If it ever does. Okay, it looks to be a bit crosswind, but it's favoring the opposite direction. All right, not a problem. So we're going to bring this bird in. And let me go to the outside view really quick as I line that up. Now, remember, I still have my uh, slots freed, which means they will open up the slower we get. They'll do it automatically. You don't have to do anything else. It's not like flaps where you got to set flaps one, flaps two. All you got to do is just unlock the slots and they will do their slotty goodness <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just gonna stop
Okay, so there we go. This is our runway and it already says that we're a little too high. So Kara, I know this is short notice, but can you tell them we're coming in on runway nine, please? Kilo Sierra Juliet X-ray traffic November 70 Alpha Golf Bravo, two miles west, 1,000 feet inbound to land runway niner. You may as well tell them we're on final too. I don't think she's going to do it, so I got to force her hand. Kilo Sierra Juliet X-ray Thank you. November 70 Alpha Golf Bravo is on final runway niner to land. Here we go. Pulling the power back. All right. Get ready to do the rudder tango. We do have high rolling resistance, so we should stop relatively easily. We'll pull the power back some more. Oh, we are floaty. Are we down? I don't even know if we're down. Yeah, I think we're down. We still have a little bit of rudder authority here, so. Kilo Golf Lima Romeo traffic Cessna November 5303 Hotel, one mile south, 1,900 feet inbound to land runway 27. Oh, well, um, I don't know how to tell you this, buddy, but we are in your way. You may want to wait. You may want to wait. All right, we're getting close to the edge of the runway here, so I am gonna try to stop us. I have the stick all the way back. Ooh, baby. All right, we have a little bit of a runway overrun here, but you know what? When I heard that that guy's coming in, I figured we might as well at least get out of the way. So welcome to Beaver, or Beaver Island, I think it is called. We're going to pull up right next to that nifty little Cessna. That looks like either the Carinado version or the Aeroplane Heaven version. So either the 170 or the 140, I have them both. Not a bad little place. You can tell it's default though, just by the buildings, but it is what it is. I'm not going to complain too much. It serves the purpose. It allows me to come in and land relatively safely so I'm fine with that all right let us see if we can turn around without hitting this guy's Cessna here okay remember if you have this thing on hard mode check your idle 800 you don't want to go below that all right parking brakes should be on let's do a quick check outside just to make sure the chocks appear when the parking brake comes on i see chocks i am okay with this and we'll just put it back to this camera here for our little uh, goodbyes and everything but first we should probably turn this aircraft off so how do you do that real easy all you have to do is turn off your magnetos. And there's that thing again that Asobo half fixed. Come on, Asobo. Work with us here. All right, and let me see if I can get rid of this. There we go. GPS, thank you very much for your good service. Go ahead and get rid of you. Uh, where is my, oh, GPS position. There we go. So that puts everything back in the box. All righty, folks. So there you have it. So Sim Update 10 as well as World Update 11. And the aircraft that I've been showing off has been Ants Aircraft's Tiger Moth, the de Havilland Tiger Moth, a very venerable, very famous aircraft from back in the golden age of aviation and also famous for being a really cool add-on from back in the golden days of FSX. And I'm really glad to see that Ant finally brought this thing over to Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is one of those birds where I will gladly fly it often. And I do recommend you pick it up if you're interested. But that will just about do it for me. So, as always, thank you for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I have been flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And just to remind you, this is basically my first look, chill vid, 
for uh, Sim Update 10, World Update 11. It's not perfect, but it certainly does feel better than before, so I will give Asobo props where due. And, of course, the Tiger Moth. Beautiful bird that I am very happy to get the show off to you. If you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will be back sometime in the near future with some more Microsoft Flight Simulator goodness. Alrighty, folks, enjoy your October, and I will talk to you soon. Ciao!